Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> Happy Saturday. Hi, Beverly. Oh, it's stalled. Uh-oh. Is it me or you? It looks okay on my end. It says excellent condition, which I love seeing. <laughs> I'm gonna try and watch you guys. Don't do that, please. I should be careful. I might have, I might have X'd out my stream. It's working now. Okay, great. All right, so I know we're supposed to be at the sewing machine today, but um, I'm actually going to work on the fit a little bit on this because I just sewed the straight up large, and I could tell that was a little bit big for me by the measurements. Um, but I just do what Hearts asks me to do. But then they saw my post and they were like, "You can do whatever you want. We want it to fit you. It fits you. It fits us." So. I decided um, that I would kind of work on that because we don't, I don't actually do that very often with you guys. I mean, I work on the fit, obviously. Hi, Melon. Um, and we also, we always talk about things like this, but hi, Terry. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but I don't usually bring it back here and show you sometimes some of the things I do to fit. And so the things I'm going to do are, um, so I tried it on my dress form because I can. And then I was like, okay, this, because I'm testing things out, right? I'm trying to see how it fits the dress form and how it fits me, because there's going to be some differences, but so far it's such a great, like it's such a great proving ground, you know? Um, and I put it on there and it looked like it was low in the waist. Hi, Linda. Oh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice to see you here. <laughs> Hello from California. It started raining today. But last week it was like 78 degrees Fahrenheit, so welcome spring soon. Um, so I could tell that this was, uh, the waist was a little low on me, but I couldn't tell if that was actually the style because sometimes wraps are kind of low, which I think is really cute, uh, really pleasing. Um, and I intend, things tend to be a little lower waisted on me and I have to shorten the bodice a little bit. Hi, Sydney day two of your um your isolation <laughs> um and but then when I tried it on it was like the the bodice is just long for me so look at how much I'm going to take it up in the shoulders can you see my pins there quite a bit uh, I'm going to take it in at the armholes I'm not saying this pattern doesn't fit well it's just um the size was a little big for me to begin with so um, I'm gonna kind of adjust it. Everything else looks pretty darn good. I forgot to sew this one dart right here, but that's okay because we are actually going to make it a little bigger. I think that's where that was. I, I adjusted the other one. So let me, this dress is quite large and I have a lot of pins in here. And so I'm gonna kind of be gentle with all my things. The other thing I'm gonna do, I tried it on multiple times by pinning this section shut which is the little area of this wrap that we hemmed and i'm pretty sure acts as a a little bit extra room to get it on and off um there's no you can leave it there it actually isn't visible because you, when you tie the wrap the wrap goes to the back you pull the ties to the front and the tie goes right over this little edge so you don't even see it so day two <laughs> hi maribel I'm so warm. I just took my jacket off and I wasn't even that warm, but now I'm really warm. And I'm wondering why my heater's on right now. It better, it better turn off. This side is quieter for the heater, but I think I'm right. Oh yeah, it's right there. I'm still getting used to being over here. <laughs> right, Sydney? I feel like um, I do that when my husband leaves. My husband is not a messy person, you guys. But there's just something about me getting the house exactly how I want when he leaves town, especially if my daughter's going to be out of town, and just, like, kind of doing that. And our house isn't messy, but it's not, like, it's not, like, clean, spotlessly clean. We have two dogs, two cats, so there's three of us, you know. But I do love doing that, kind of getting it ready. All right, so this pin's already trying to come out. I bought new pins yesterday. Because I started trying to figure out my cover on my dress form. So I did, I don't know, some of you were here yesterday. I did an impromptu last minute stream um, of me draping on my new dress form. Uh, it wasn't 
strictly a real draping session because what I'm trying to do is honestly figure out where I want the style lines on my dress form because it's me. So I'm not draping like you would traditionally because there's nothing to drape on. There's no guidelines yet to drape onto. Like there's no seam. So I, I'm actually playing with putting handle on there. See, see, can you see that? No, you can't see that. I'll put my full screen on. I think it works. Let's see. Yeah, so see, I worked on doing my dress form here. So none of these lines right here exist on my dress form yet. So I'm creating them. So I'm deciding where I want them. So I'm not doing technically a proper draping quite yet. And um, I'm still figuring out where I want things. I'm getting used to it. Like this line I'm going to move, you know. So, um, so yeah. So, I, you know, like having the... Um, being able to put the dress on there is great. And having new pins was essential because what I find is that those, these big quilting pins, they just fall out of my garments. So I kind of wanted to get some that I won't fall out. And so I got these little silk pins. So we'll see. And I also got patchwork pins. You guys, I spent so much on pins. These patchwork pins. And then I got more quilting pins. And I also got different colors because I'm gonna mark different things on my dress form. So I had already pinned this before I bought the pins. So I'm gonna try some of these new patchwork pins. So, oh, this is the um, bowline sweater by uh, Paper Cut. It is really fun. You know, it wasn't my kind of silhouette, but making it is so much fun and it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty genius. I'm just, I'm experimenting with my new pins. You know, I also got a marker. These feel, these actually, these patchwork pins feel exactly like my little pins. So let's try a silk pin. I feel like this fabric is good for this. This is like $25 in pins, you guys. When did those get so expensive? These are a little longer. I like the shortness of these patchwork pins. The silk pins feel tighter in there. Someone asked me on Instagram, like, which ones do you like? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's why I bought so many. Um, I really just wanted different colors so that I can mark on my dress form, like where I like sleeveless things. Um, I don't know, Beverly, I think so. I saved the package. I'm doing an experiment. So I wrote on this, the patchwork ones. And look at, they're, they're clear. They're quite pleasing to look at, honestly. Fine patchwork, extra fine. Heat resistant, can be ironed. Smoothly passes through cloth, useful when pinning down detailed piecework, heat resistant glass headed pins. So there you go. And then my others, the silk pins for lightweight fabrics, which is kind of why I got it. These are 0.5 millimeter in diameter, and these are, the patchwork are 0.4 millimeter. The quilting pins are monsters comparatively. So, um, the quilting pins are kind of what I'm planning on using on the dress form, because they are really long and, I, and the, the head is so um, prominent you know, so I can see it. And so I'll just mark things like um, where I like sleeveless things, where I want the waist of my jeans, or I don't know, you know, like just things like that, like that I, I give me a good guide when I'm doing things. So, so anyway, I'm playing with that. And I also got this thing. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. I've just never used one. But you can mark your fabric like that. And then you get like a crisp fold there that you can see on both sides. I doubt you can see this on the camera. Let me see if I can do a better example. So can you see this line? The white one right there. That's pretty prominent. And I can see it on the back too. Another thing you can do is you can iron your pins, just iron right over here, and then you'll have these little pinholes. That's a good guide too. 
since we're talking about this kind of thing. And I just saw this with the pins and I was like, let's just give it a go. I'm a Clover fan, so. <laughs> All right, um, so yeah, so the things I'm gonna do alteration wise are I'm going to sew this shut, which I'll just do when I go sew. I'm gonna take in my bodice, mostly at the armhole right here. I'm kind of snugging it up. And just doing that does raise the armhole a tiny bit because you have this just very gradual curve right here, right? It's not very much. It, it did feel a lot better just pulling that in, but when I raised the shoulders too, that was a much bigger impact. Um, I'm also going to make the dart quite a bit bigger. It's already in there and I'm, I'm making it an inch bigger. So hopefully I can actually get this dart in here uh, with that, that big of wide of a dart to blend in well. Um, I already have my fringe seams in here too, but this is such a big amount. I can just cut that off, <laughs> do it again. And then I have to adjust my um, all my facings and my neckband collar. So let's just give this a go. I think um, I actually would rather be drawing on the fabric. It's so much. This side seems already sewn, and I but I did into a French seam here, thankfully. So I have a little bit of leeway, so which is kind of nice. So I'm going to just dive in. I'm going to cut a lot of this stuff. I, what I like to do when I'm doing these kinds of adjustments is get it to the seam allowance immediately. That way I don't have to fit fuss with the pins. So, you know, right here, I'm going to try and taper this to nothing right here. This is the waist armhole side seam just to give you a point of reference and you guys can see right i zoomed this in pretty far so that by brightening up the screen i didn't blind you guys too much with the white space around it <laughs> so and then we'll, we'll kind of re um smooth out this curve here so we have a nice smooth juncture right here how we already have right now so yeah i'm just gonna get right in there i'm gonna um cut it about, I'm gonna give myself probably a 5 8 seam and, cause I'm gonna do a, a um, French seam. I'm just gonna start it right there. And now I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna blend it to nothing. I don't mess around. <laughs> So I want to blend this to nothing. So I'm going to blend it to that raw edge there. Like that. And I'm going to have to remove some of my seam right here. I actually might remove more than that because I'll probably make this now a French seam. So now we'll be ready to sew this next time we're at the, the machine. Looks like I double sewed the spot right there. I probably uh, got off track or something. It just feels like there's extra stitching. What are you guys up to today? I don't even know if we'll get to the sewing today. All right, so we have this pretty far down. All right, got that. Uh, let's leave our dart here for now. I actually think it's going to be more like this. But I can put that on the dress form and on myself and check it. And that's what I do. I put it on the, on the dress form and then I put it on me because I wanted to see. All right, so this is right here, an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half. So let's see. Let's see if I have different different amounts on here too. Look, this one's the opposite. This is we're looking at the back right here. This right here, this little clip is just holding my label. That's all that is. So you see that? So I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna make it the same, but it doesn't mean that you are the same left and right. So sometimes if you keep doing pinning something like this and you keep seeing that one side is uh, more than the other, that you're removing more on one side than the other. I would trust that. Just make sure that you're not trying the garment on um, inside out so that you're not adjusting the left shoulder um, when you're going to be wearing it on your right shoulder. You know what I mean? So try it right, you know, right side out. 
pin it and, and then when you make that you know like okay like this is asymmetrical <laughs> Uh, pin it in the where you think it needs to be and then try it on inside out and get it refine it you know what I mean so wow Malin nice <laughs> you're putting away what do you mean putting away are you finish Avery leggings and that oh I've seen the Kyla yeah, that does sound like good. That's like a meter of fabric. Mint knits are so great because they're so wide, you know. I bet your legging doesn't have a side seam too, so that helps. All right. So are you going to wear them together like a little matching set? <laughs> so I think like, I think what I'm going to do is just take it straight one inch off of this because look at what it's going to do to my back neckline. Let's look at that. So when I take... Let's turn this inside out. There's a, this is a lot of dress, so it's a little bit uh, big pile there. All right, so when we look at this, so the dress is upside down. This is the back. These are the fronts. It's inside out. I stay stitched my neckline after the streams. I completely forgot to do that while we were sewing. Um, and I really definitely wanted to stabilize it. So when I take an inch off, look what happens. Not only do I get this big old mismatched shoulder right here, I make it so that there's no back neckline here. So you've got to be really careful with something like this. You're going to have to redraw your neckline a little bit. This is really going to adjust my facings. And hopefully I have enough, hopefully the facing pieces I have will still work or I have enough fabric to um, cut them, you know? Because <laughs> otherwise I'll have to do contrast facings. Oh, you're putting away, yeah, that feels so good, Sydney. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh, you, yeah, you're getting it, you're getting stuff done. I wish I could make this bigger. Can I make this bigger? No. Oh, that's cool, Beverly. You've made those. Is the is it have like a wide fabric waistband? That kind of thing. All right, so I want this to be an inch smaller, right? Which means I need to add my seam allowance back to that amount. So really, I just need to cut three eighths of an inch off. Let me. I'll do that math for you again. So basically, if I want my shoulder to be one inch shorter, this is my seam line right here. This is my seam line right here, okay? If I want this one inch shorter, right? I'm raising up the whole dress, whoop. <laughs> um, that would be my new seam line right here, right, right here. Then I would add my seam allowance to that, the five eighths. Okay, I'm liking this thing already so I have a I don't know if you can see that but see my lines there okay I am switching to my other I don't like struggling to look at you guys let's see here yes there's my chat oh I like that so much better I like that so much better. Okay. See, most streamers have a couple monitors. I don't. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, so see, I that's my seam line. This is my seam allowance. And so I'm going to... I, I just, you know, like I can just cut this off, right? I'll just do that and we'll show, I'll show you what happens. So now what I have is two shoulder seams that don't match. You see that? So I'm going to have to retaper this right here. It still lines up over here. So what we'll do is we'll mark 
where the seam line is, which is right here, right, that's my seam line. That's where this neckline needs to come like this, something like that. So now let's, let's fix this one here. And we'll do our neckline at the same time. So I just need to remove three eighths. It's hard to see my three eighths on here. I'll just pull that out to be sure. Okay. And same thing, you want this juncture right there, which is right here. Okay, so that's my seam juncture right there at the neckline. We're gonna do it symmetrical, you know. Do you like wearing muslin? That's nice. There are some nice muslins out there. All right, so here is my I'm liking this thing a lot. All right, so I have that and where is where is one that I've cut? Here's one. I think that'll do. I'm lining it up on the seam line and I'm just kind of looking at this juncture of the neckline here. It's making a nice smooth transition. I really like smooth transitions. You're gonna trim it off if it's not smooth anyway, so you might as well control what it's gonna be. All right now I have my center back neck back there. I'm just clipping my label there because I'm notoriously forget them. Okay, so let's see. Now let's trim our other side seam. I'm just going by um, how this fit me on each side rather than taking the same amount off on each one, you know? Ooh, Beverly, that's nice. The Kyla is like the one that is um, like rib, the rib tank with the binding, that one. All right, this week I'm getting my nerve up to ask Clover for a sponsorship. <laughs> I like it, just about everything they make. And I trust it. Like, it's like, I'm rarely someone who just blindly trusts a brand, but when I see something that they make, I'm like, hmm, that actually sounds like an interesting idea. And then I, I'll buy it because it's them, you know? All right, so I want this to be to nothing at the side seam here. This one goes into that weird little dart we made, that side seam dart, remember that? You probably don't, because you're not sewing this, but <laughs> for those of you who are, you know what I mean. Let's see here. I'm going to add five eighths. I'm just blending it to nothing right there. That's what that means. To nothing means you just taper it all the way down. You need to have your seam open. Um, it can be a little confusing to do stuff like this, like doing the taper is as simple as it seems. I've definitely gotten lost in what I am trying to accomplish because I'm like, wait, am I going to the seam allowance or the raw edge? And you just have to be consistent. It doesn't matter which one you do as long as you're doing the right one and you've been consistent, you know, so. <laughs> Beverly, that's so great to hear. <laughs> I love it. Do you like them though? Which, did you get the tapered tailors all or did you get their tailors all? So.
And with industrial style construction. Oh, industry style construction. Yeah, where it has the like um, uh, cover stitch armholes with the double needle, but like a serging on the inside and the binding. The sewn on binding with the serger. All right, so now we have this little guy is not even attached anymore. I have this dart here I need to deal with still. All right, so we have done both of our. Oh, I haven't done this back um, side seam here. Just tapering it. And we have our shoulders. We have both back side seams. And now we have, let's see. I think this one's done too, right? Let's check. It's gonna be hard to check since I don't have this dart zone. But I think that is it. Yeah, okay. So now let's work on our darts here. So now for the darts, it's a little trickier. Let's use our dress form for this. Uh, this is a classic thing for me and a lot of folks, I think. Um, you get that gaping in the, the armhole right here. And um, yeah, that's awesome, Beverly, yeah. Yeah, the tapered one works better for what I use it for than the tailors all. The tailors all is a different purpose. Um, and I use a screw punch for that it's just this morning I was looking at the um, suggested tools and materials I need to do this mini sew and sew along this mini quilt sew along that I'm doing with from um, Alice and glass and juicy juice I it's like <laughs> it's totally you know a noob going for the eye candy right I am to so that person right now but I, I really have always liked the mini quilts and I've sewn little ones there in my house I did it kind of on the fly and they're not that great um so yeah why that is to nothing this dart's already sewn by the way and I'm adding to it <laughs> um I was looking at some of the tools they suggest they add. They suggest the add a eighth ruler, which I have an add a quarter ruler, so I would need to get a new one because I do not translate. Hi, Stephanie. Nice to see you. Um, and then a seam roller, like a so you don't have to get up and use your iron all the time. Uh, the standard things: rotary knife, um, a specific eighty weight thread. I have 80 weight thread, but my 80 weight thread is uh, hopefully in the right colors. Um, there was maybe, if, maybe there was something else. I don't think there was anything else. But anyway, I was thinking, I'm not gonna buy. I was like, okay, at first I was like, all right, I gotta get the right tools. And I was like, you don't need to buy the tools yet. <laughs> but here I am, like I do, I say I don't like tools, like buying lots of tools, but I do have a few things that I really, really like and I won't, I won't live without, so. Maybe I just, just need to calm down on that talk. <laughs> All right, so let's let's put this on my um, dress form and just see how we're going now. My dress form has lots of pins right now. Oops. I've got this temporary handle pinned to the bottom, so I'm trying it out. I'm just going to push all my pins in. This is what's nice about this kind of dress form because um, a regular industry one, you can't push in all the pins. They don't go very far. So I'm just going to push all those in so my dress doesn't pull them out or get hung up on. It's going to get hung up on these others. So maybe I'll just poke these into the form like this so it doesn't grab it when I'm trying to take it off because that happened earlier this is just my work in progress here
Okay. Where's the full size camera? Full screen. <laughs> oh. Oh, interesting one. Really, Sydney? It says dry clean only. Um, well, you know, because we commercially made those, we obviously weren't pre-washing fabrics. Um, and I 100% stood by all of our stuff was machine washable. So if you throw a, anything I've made for you, you can throw anything I've made for you in the washing machine. You can throw it in the dryer too, depending on what it is, but um, I just tell people to air dry it so then they trust me on the machine washing part. <laughs> because, um, and I did use home deck fabrics, like Foxy was like that, and Pup Cake were both from Durley, which is a, um, a pretty well-known um, home interior fabric company. So, can you um, cut a piece and pre and test it. What I would do is do that and draw a square on it and then measure that square and then measure it afterward. But the thing is, if it's only shrinking and you pre-wash it, big deal, it's gone. But most likely it's fine. It might be easier to use when it's pre-washed and it might be easier used when it's not pre-washed. Um, I would check that out too. All right, uh, let's see here. This is the back. I'm thinking of naming my dress form Jeremy. <laughs> if you ever meet me in person, I would say, oh, hi, my name is Jeremy. And when then the person says, Jeremy, that's an interesting name. I always say, it's like Jeremy with an S, you know, or they're like, wait, what's your name? And they can't say it. I say, it's like Jeremy with an S. That's what I always say. <laughs> look at that. That always look that already looks a lot better. You can see my pins under there. I mean, I'm pretty lumpy myself, you know, obviously. All right, so we have seam allowance um, up here. So let's overlap at the proper amount. Oh my God, this is so, so useful. <laughs> There's where the back's gonna go. I can't tell, It maybe this fabric gets a little bit relaxed. We're gonna do this because we're gonna check the uh, dart at the armhole. Get up there. I basically did it to nothing at the waist. A, because it fit me pretty good there. If anything, it could get bigger. Um, it, it wasn't tight, it fit fine. And um, B, I've already sewn the lower part, so it's not necessary that it get uh, smaller. All right, so look at this. This is a little bit of rippling happening. Um, not because of my fit changes, but because I didn't stay stitched soon enough. So this dress is really interesting. So there is this under thing, that, like this area right here is hemmed. I need to move my fabric bin here so I can move my gel mat there. <laughs> so you see it has this finished area right here and so when you're wearing it there's going to be a hook and eye inside here and then on the outside actually I'm telling you this wrong it goes like this this one has the hook and eye
I'm just overlapping that on the seam allowance there. Okay, so this one will have the hook and eye, it's finished edge. Hook and eye underneath here that goes to the side. And on the outside, you have this um, decorative loop and you make your kind of your own button buttonhole thing. All right, so this is gonna get sewn together right here. So this is actually sewn. Origami dress. Oh boy. It's so much better when you pin things together before you put it on a dress form. It's more accurate too, by the way. You see that? You can make sure you get it right on the seam allowance. You don't want to do it differently than how you're going to sew it, you know? <laughs> that would defeat the purpose. There we go. So that's kind of roughly. So then this goes over here. Now it looks really low cut, but remember there's a neckband. And so that's another thing to think about. Um, this neckband looks like it does go up on her neck. Ugh. See there, her, it goes up on her neck back here. But not much. It just feels kind of like unwashed fabric, yeah. No, I'm not gonna have to lower it. I, I wanted to bring it in, honestly. Um, but this ga gaping I was having is definitely not as bad now. So maybe I can stick with the original dart amount, because look at that. That looks pretty splendid right there. Hubba hubba. Look at that. This dart looks good here, too. I hope that's true. <laughs> So yeah, so you, do you see this, Sydney, right here, this line on here? This is where this gray t-shirt, I don't know if you can see the gray t-shirt, that is where that is on me. So no, that looks pretty good. I wouldn't want to lower it. Um, I am thinking about how this neck band is going to be now, because um, maybe I should be allowing more room for that. Let's finish putting this on her. So yeah, so there's a neck band here, and this is how you put it on. Go to the back, I'm hugging myself, and then you go to the front. So all this will be sewn. I think sewing this shut is a good plan because then it looks the same. What do I do here? So I'm finding like like this one because of this this is all stitched right here, it lays better. I actually think stitching these together, and maybe you do that, you stitch these two side seam darts together. I think that would be a really good idea. And so if it's not in the directions, I'm definitely gonna add that. I hope I hopefully I'll remember. Because what happens is when I don't tuck the wrap in there like this like this it kind of sags but maybe that's later on in the directions and the finishing i haven't looked yet and see this right here will be um it'll be with this little loop button type thing right here like you essentially kind of make like a a hook and loop with fabric and a button or a frog closure type of thing. So right, Emmalin, I know. You know, Malin, I sew almost everything in um like so when I was new to having a serger, I had cream, white, navy blue and black and now i would add if i if i would tell my older like my younger self gray 
if you just have those, I, in fact, I wouldn't even have cream and white. I would just have um, one or the other. I like cream because cream it's softer and it really doesn't make a big deal on white. I don't sew a lot of pure white stuff for me. So if you sew a lot of like white, not off-white, get the white. So white, navy, black, and gray. And get enough cones of those and that's it. Because buying the little miniature cones for a project is just as expensive, you know? Thread is really expensive. That is one thing, like when we would have to um, get it, um, even our supplier would be like, I have bad news for you guys. Um, unless you wanna buy, it was something like, was it 200 cones of thread? It was something astronomical like that even for us. They were like, we, we can't do it. Like, so when we would have a fabric that we absolutely couldn't use cream, gray, black, or navy on, and we had to switch colors, and we had to buy cones of thread, I would have to go buy it full retail, but I would have to buy a lot of it. And um, it was really tough on us. <laughs> White, beige, black, medium blue, and red. Red's a good one, that, that's a good one too. And you know, gray really blends in with so many fabric colors. And this is the other thing, I used to work for a couple manufacturers who matched their thread color to the inside of the fabric. So say say um, you did a fabric that was um, printed like this. You know, this black is black on the outside, right? But it, look how white it is on the inside. You could get away with gray. But I would just sew this in black, obviously, because if it's a serged seam on knits and it's gonna pull apart at the seams, then you need it to be whatever value is on the outside. It's a tough one, Melinda. The other thing you can do is just go back with a straight stitch and sew the seams with the, right, the thread color you want. Yeah, you could do that too. Just swap out, swap out one looper or two. It's all a racket. <laughs> yeah, because my, my industrial sewing machine takes two my serger takes um, four to five, and then I had Rayanne's machines, and I had the binding machine, um, and if we had had other machines like garment thing, yeah, it was like lost thread. So sometimes the factory even would be like, uh, whoa, uh, you have this weird color this time. <laughs> like, yep. Because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't pay for their thread. That's the only thing I didn't pay for. I don't know, you guys, this looks so much better than the picture. Did you guys see my picture on Instagram? This looks a lot better, doesn't it? I mean, you know, a little less ice cream. But who's counting, right? I think I would also top edge stitch this because it wants to roll. Edge stitch this wrap. But I would, I'm going to tack that too. Um, the neck, the, I'm not worried about this waviness at all because um, I could actually ease this into the neckband and it'll be fine. So, because see, look, this is looking stretched out. The rest of it looks fine. I feel good with this. I'm really happy with these changes. So we just need to re-sew it all now. <laughs> um, but I also need to make my facings. Oof, shoot, I just fell off there. Um, Cause I got loads of them. There's no face interfacing on the armholes, which is interesting. Maybe I missed that. I could have missed that. Neck band. Oh boy, what have I done? What have I done? This is the, this is this one. Yeah, doesn't that look better? Okay, so I have uh, neck bands. What is this one? This one is left neck band. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna go up on my neck. I 
actually don't mind that. Um, this shoulder width looks a lot narrower than what I have here. This girl's buff. <laughs> I went to look at the back of her. <laughs> YouTube, yeah. That's awesome, Malin. How are you liking it? What did you get? I want to write down what you got. Which, um, which cover stitch did you get, Malin? And are you happy with it, more importantly? <laughs> Maybe you should get sponsored by them before you tell us. <laughs> um. Oh, you guys can't see. Sorry. Just shout at me. <laughs> I think that'll be nice. I think that'll look nice with the seam allowances gone and then when it's uh, made to fit I think it'll be really nice so now I just need to make sure that um, it is uh, the right length because um, remember we took off with the shoulders and the side seams and we raised this back neck so lots of things there let's try and pin this together Oh, okay. There's a cover stitch book. That's smart. I'm trying to hire the gal locally to give me a little one-on-one -on -one because I just want to use my machine better. And I've had it for a long time. You guys, I've had it for 20 years. I mean, is it time for me? I just don't feel like it's time for me to get a new machine. You know? But in a way, maybe 20 years is a good time. It's a good machine, you know? I know I say this all the time. But it's just not doing it what it used to do. So I was thinking if I hired someone, she could be like, you know what, these settings might work better for you, or um, try this, or you know what I mean? I'm gonna pin my seam allowances together before I take it off. Hopefully I didn't catch the shirt underneath there. All right, let's take this and this. This is to itself and this is to itself the darts looking pretty darn good oh you know that sounds familiar oh really hi Sherry how's it going all right I also wrote down the one that, um, well, the gal who owns Green Line Studio, I asked her just to tell me, like, hey, do you mind telling me what she, and she loves it, and I only found them used on eBay. Yeah, there's a, a, a highly recommended gal at the fabric local fabric store here, and but the classes are like five hours long. They're very, she's trained and certified in a certain kind of um, teaching of sergers and stuff. I don't, sorry, I don't know the technical stuff. Um, it's probably a specific brand, but um, they carry my brand there. So I felt, I felt like it would be fine. Come on. Oh, I'm stepping on it. Okay. Let's move Jeremy over here. Yeah, I think Jeremy's going to be her name. <laughs> How are you doing, Sherry? We're kind of nerding out on the fit of my Tibetan chupa. chupa. It's not mine, but I'm giving it to hearts. After all this work. Okay. So... Oh my god. I really wish I would stop just pulling these off willy-nilly. Silly. Very silly. This is it right here. Okay, so let's just pin.
pin this baby on here. Now it's interesting that there's only two fabric and one interfacing, two fabric, huh? Two, I guess there are only two fronts, are there? Why does it feel like there's three fronts? It feels like there's three fronts to me. Not funny. Wait, is this this way? Where's the notch? Is that the notch? Anytime is the right time for your machine. <laughs> that's cool. That's what I have. Yeah, right, Sherry? That's what I was thinking. And I have, I took the class that came with my machine. But like I said, it's been before since before Cricut was born. Like, I got that machine. Right? I'm wrong. I haven't had it that long. I've had my my Bernina um, that long. Because that came with me to Colorado. See, the story is... I had my own business, I was freelancing, and I had been for whew, like eight years, freelance pattern drafting and garment design and all that. I'd won an award, uh, and uh, I got uh, recruited. And so I took the job, and it was in Colorado. And when I was visiting my husband, who was not my husband at the time and still back in Humboldt, my IUD failed. <laughs> and so, um, there I was, stuck in Colorado, pregnant. <laughs> so I moved back to Humboldt. <laughs> so I had the Bernina, but I didn't have the, the overlock. So maybe I've had that 15 years, so. And congrats on, yeah, congrats on your baby lock. And mine's a baby lock and it has that air threading, which is, I agree, it is very cool. I didn't do the notches on this, okay. Can I flip it over the wrong way? That's the question. And I can't. Okay. I mean, maybe I could. Maybe I could force that. All right, so this is this one. But I, I you know, my, my mom had her machine for so long. I just don't really feel like I should have to buy a new machine every 15 years, because then what happens to it, you know? Like, why can't it just live on till it doesn't? Yeah. I agree, and so that's why I'm like looking at just have, having the, the serger expert because maybe she would be like, you know, you might want a new machine. This is great for someone doing X, Y, Z, but for what you're doing, you might want to move on from it because I bought it so that I could do prototyping for clients that would look like it was industry made, like factory made. So that when the factory got it, the the prototypes, they would know exactly what kind of stitch to use. So I got it for that, you know, it was the best I could find. Okay, so here is my bodice. This is the right neckband. This is the Oh boy. Oh, okay. I thought I pinned the wrong one to that. I was like, <laughs> that would have been my face. <laughs> I didn't. It's just because the, the shoulder seam is inside out. Okay. So this is my right neck band. There's a notch there. So there's the notch. Um, this one didn't change down here. So let's see, because I feel like um, this curve is just not going to stay the same now. You know what I mean? And I imagine that the neck at the center back is where the seam goes. So I may need to redraft this. I don't know if I have enough fabric though. So I may want to make this work. And I can do that by putting a, another seam in it at the shoulder, maybe. OK. 
Okay, we have our garment as flat as we can get it on the bottom and as relaxed as possible. I'm looking at the green. Everything else has to be kind of smushed. Without taking the pattern pieces all out and seeing if um, how much like holler curve is in this, it's hard, kind of hard to tell. <laughs> Look at that. Hi, Angela. Apologies are never necessary. You're welcome anytime. How's it going? Um, let's look at the directions. <laughs> right, Sherry? Yeah, I decided to really work on the fit of this since uh, Hearts gave me permission to make it work for me. It has been really good. Yeah, we took um, a lot off the sides, the shoulders. I put it, just put, pinned it and put it on the dress form, which was so awesome. And um, now we, ver we verify that that was looking good. Now I'm just adjusting the remaining pattern pieces that need to sew to it so that um, I don't have any hiccups when I go to sew it. I just want to see how this neckband gets sewn on. I already passed these. I just need this one here. So let's see. That does look like a center back notch. I don't see a seam back there, but um, I'm assuming that's what that is. Let me see. See how there's these interesting... This is what I'm talking about, how it closes on the top there. See that? Very nice. Classy. So if, um, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to see how these line up at the center front. But they're flush. Mine is hardly flush. <laughs> Left front. I think that this is the one I need right here. Right front. Because this is my right front. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm thinking this notch goes to the center back. Oh no, there's my double notch right there. Yep, that is right. Okay, that looks a lot better. We like that better, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so um, I think what I'll do, since it doesn't look to me like there's much collar curve except when you get here, like this, so that it does this around your neck. It's called, uh, I don't want to call it the roll in the collar, but it's kind of that kind of uh, feeling. So <clears throat> with collars, we all know what a Peter Pan collar is, right? Um, generally associated with children's clothing, but it's not like exclusive to that. But Peter Pan collars usually have no roll in the collar. They, they are flush and flat to the body got the little curve right there right just sits there pretty as a button right and then um, you can have a little bit of a roll which means the collar does this a little bit at the back neck and then it flattens out at the front so Peter Pan's don't generally have a lot of roll in them uh, the other style collar would that obviously has a roll in it is a convertible collar so that would be I'm not talking about a collar with a stand it would be like as if you took the collar and the stand and you blended them together made them one pattern piece so that you have your stand your collar all as one piece right and so you you see pattern pieces collars go like this from the center back neck and then they curve up when they get to the front that's so that you have the roll and your collar um, lays a specific way and is a style so the the extreme example would be the 70s collars, you know, with the like big, like really tall 
rolled collars, and then obviously they have the dramatic point, right? Um, so this is a stand-up collar in the back, and it's flush in the front. It's a neckband. It's a little different. So when because this isn't curved right here, <clears throat> this will stand up. If it were curved right here, it wouldn't fit me because this neckline is up, up against my neck. It would have had to be cut away to lay flat and fit in there, right? You would, you would have made the pattern piece basically right here parallel and then come around to nothing there like that. That's how that would, that's the difference. So because this has this upright portion at the back, we wanna make sure we don't do anything to disturb that. If you know what I mean? So this is great stuff, Sherry. This is um viscous linen noil. I can tell you about it. This is from Hearts Fabric, comes in a lot of great colors. This is the dark teal which that's it it's different than that <laughs> maybe it looks better in the face cam i don't know it kind of gets this weird these cameras are kind of hot color wise it's the um 98575 98575 on hearts fabric we've made a few things out of this wash and wear this is not ironed I've ironed it where I've sewn it, but when I started cutting it, uh, this is how it comes out. You you don't, it's not like linen. It does have linen in it, but it has a lot more drape. It's great. It's kind of got that slubby, noil look to it. It's great. I like it. We've sewn a few things in it. All right, so let's see. So we have our... We're just going to take this off. I'm not going to adjust that pattern piece. I will do that later. So I haven't taken anything off this piece here. So let's just line this up here. Overlap at the seam allowance. So we've taken it off right here. So if I took out basically two inches right here, this is what we're talking about. And see, look, then when I wind it around, it actually matches the seam line right here matches the center of the back. So that's basically what we're talking about right there. So I think what I'm going to do is take a, a chance and just take off that amount that I took off on the back, on the shoulder. But what we can do this too, we can just measure it on the seam line. 18. Okay, so I just need to add, take, just measure this at the um, center back. Nineteen and an eighth, and that goes flush to the um, raw edge there, right there. So I actually need some seam allowance there. Oof. I don't really need to take a whole lot off, but I'm going to take it off anyway. Mainly because I know that number's lying to me a little bit. Oh, you want petal pink. Well, that's pretty funny. They're, they're known for their pink. Try the Brussels washer linen, Sherry. The Brussels washer linen, if you like um, hanky linen, oh, unless it is hanky linen. Hanky linen is pretty fine the brussels washer linen is looks more like a plain weave no slubby noil effect and that too that stuff is amazing my red upton dresses and that stuff i like it all right i'm just going to cut off an inch it's gone <laughs> I'm going to do the same on this one. We can walk it if we want, but I'm pretty confident. Numbers try not to lie to me. This is the front, so this is the back neck. And don't forget we have a discount code there if you end up using hearts. The so so 10. That'll help a little bit. 
All right. Now let's do it to our interfacing. Hello, Walter. Hello from California. How's it going there? How's your weather? Is that where you live or are you visiting? It started sprinkling here today, which is very welcome. Last year we got um, this insane amount of rain really late in the season. Like it, it was incredible. And it was also really incredible because it was our spring after the campfire. Um, so of, of course, right? And um, so now it says we're 25% of what last year was and you know, we're going into spring. So everyone's a little like, whoa. But then, like I said, I, I actually was really impressed with the amount of rain we got. <laughs> I lived in Humboldt County <laughs> for 17 or 18 years, so. Okay, I want to take an inch off there and an inch off this one. What time is it? It's already noon. Okay. Okay. So I think. Oh, now we need to do our inner uh, our armhole facings. That'll be a little bit trickier. Actually, that'll be a little bit easier. I take that back. Because the, there's seams at the armhole and the and the shoulder seam. You are Angela. I'm in Chico. Okay, so here I need to iron those. Let's look at our facings, our armhole facings. Let's take out our pins here on the side seam. This is the one with the sewn dart, so we'll use this one. All right, so our front, that's not bad. 65 sounds pretty nice. I mean, it's, you know, March, so Montana can be kind of cold. What is this one? Front. All right. Now this one should lay on your garment flush. So this one's going to lose it at the top and at the bottom here, which makes sense. With the dart zone. And uh, don't forget you need your seam allowance still up here. So I'm just gonna cut off three eighths. So I still have my seam allowance. And this one I'm just gonna cut it to match. And then I'm going to transfer it to this. Line up those notches. You can always use the part you cut off too, like this piece. That's nice. Nice way to do it too. Yeah, you're like three hours away. Stay safe there. I feel like uh, surprisingly um, that virus has uh, affected the West Coast more than I would nor normally think. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take off these pins here and these pins here. I'm not very uh, OCD about things like pins, but I'm going to reorganize all my pins off camera. <laughs> I'm going to put them back the way they came in their little box. Since I'm, you know, it's like when you have that new item. <laughs> okay, this one's pretty easy. Oh, no, I'm not doing a back neck facing. I am doing back armhole facing the back neck the neckline is clean finished with that neck band there's no facing we 
Yep, this is it. Sorry, I didn't, I, I'm zoomed in. I can zoom out a little bit. Hey, Brooke, how's it going? Oh my gosh, 45. <laughs> I saw your thing, Brooke, where you said that, that people in Napa called a fool's spring. I saw the, the exact same expression in someone's post in Texas. There we go. <laughs> Talk about barely notching something, right? <clears throat> I'm really glad it's going to start raining here. I mean, it started raining today because uh, I really want to weed my front. There's not very many, and I want to get on top of it ahead of time, you know, while the ground is nice and soft. So. No, Sherry, they get to keep them. That's part of my deal, actually. Um, that's why I really should press <laughs> the sponsorships more because I don't really want to get... 50 garments a year and also I feel like there's a lot of things I could sew that I wouldn't normally wear myself but maybe you guys would and it gets it gets the gives you guys the opportunity to see more things patterns I've never heard of patterns I probably wouldn't pick for myself so um that's what I that's my pitch I'm like look I if you send me everything I need to make it I'll send it back to you I'll even send the pattern if you want Hearts is just really kind and, and they trace a pattern for me because they have a copy that they need to keep. And I, my only stipulation, the only thing I say is I do not want to trace or print out a pattern. The pattern must arrive with it. That's it. Yeah, Sydney. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. It's drizzling. Well, it might have stopped, but yeah, it's drizzling here. Yeah, it got cold. Exactly, right? <laughs> I know. I, I kind of am glad. I, it was starting to get warm, and it was starting to get warm upstairs in my house. And I was like, making me cranky. Okay, so we have our little front that's off by itself again now. Now that we've taken apart the top. Um, I'm trying to decide. Do I sew some more today? Like we could try and finish. I have a, there's a, there's a little bit to go. Like once I do this, there's a bit to go. The other thing I was thinking I could do is stop this stream, finish this dress on Wednesday and start a new stream and continue on my, my Beatrice cover. So, um, what do you guys think? Like I, I can keep sewing. I just feel like there's a lot left for the rest of the day. I don't think I can finish it all in one day and then it would leave this really weird amount left, you know? Um, plus I need to seam rip a little bit right here because I'm gonna, I'm gonna sew that together. This is the only part. Now that I know I can get it on and off. Hopefully I still can after <laughs> doing all these alterations. I had to think about that. Oh, I thought you said you got a cold. I've got a cold right now. Cricket got one this week, and now it's gone. I We thought it was allergies, and now I'm like, oh, no, I've been taking allergy medicine. But I feel fine. There you go. Yeah, I think I got my Brussels washer linen. The red... I think I did get that from Stone Mountain and Daughter, but they have a huge wall of colored linens at uh, Hearts. You can also ask Hearts, hey, do you have anything in petal pink? They will tell you. They're really good. Yeah, they do have pretty stuff. All right. So what do you guys think? Um... Beatrice cover, or do you want me to sew a little bit? Well, 
What's Creative Live? I'm just going to steam rip until you guys tell me what you want to do. <laughs> this is my opportunity to do my little, like, pitch. Like, yeah, so there's, you can find any of my videos and live streams. If you're looking for something, you can just look at soso.live and search for the project, just the pattern name, um, and um, find all the videos affiliated with it so you don't have to search YouTube and they may not be in order on YouTube. Hi, Ray. Night. You say finish the dress Wednesday. Walter says so. <laughs> I have other things I could sew right now. We could sew a little bit. Beatrice today. <laughs> So, 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 you don't have preference. Okay, I'll just sew for a bit. I don't mind. Let me take this out here. I'm almost done here. And um, now I'm going to shut shut this little slit. I tested it. I pinned it shut, and I could still get it on and off. Um, and the, the changes I made to this, I didn't make through the hip area. I only made them through the bust and shoulder area. More Beatrice. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Pulling me two different directions. I might work on the Beatrice later again today anyway. I really need the cover on there so I can do proper draping and I can do proper fitting and I can see my guidelines. And I just want some kind of working cover on there so I can decide what I like and I don't like about my cover, you know? What a weird way to, it's like, it's like I'm draping a person. Don't analyze that statement too much because I know it's me, but um, it's like I'm, you know, because a person, if you were standing in front of me and I was draping you, I wouldn't pin into you, I promise. I, I can't guarantee that actually, I've poked people before, but um, you don't have guidelines on you, right? So that's kind of the kind of draping I'm doing right now on it. I'm deciding where I want those guidelines to be. It's good to take breaks. Oh, thanks, Brooke. I know, I really like wearing red. You want to know the color. We could do that kind of early on, maybe. All right, let's, you're gonna have to let me, you're gonna have to give me a second to set up the face cam over there. I've been working on my background too a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna sew, wait, did I just take out the wrong ones? No, this is it, okay, that's what I wanted to take out and then this is finished like that, all right. Yeah, okay. All right, let's move all this. It's nice not to have all those pins in there now. Let's put all these in here. We got to move the operation over there. We need this. We might need these. And I'm going to iron those on there. All right. So Wednesday, I might do the, the later stream on Wednesday if we finish it this then, because then we get some sewing then. And Thursday, I'm going to sew uh, cut project bags. I better start promoting a sew along. I'm going to do a sew along of the project bag. And so I'm going to cut Thursday and sew Saturday. So if you're interested in bag sewing or heavy duty bag sewing, even if you don't have the pattern, um, we'll talk a lot about that. So, all right, let me switch to the iron. Actually, let me, let me let me adjust my camera. Where's my little camera change thing? Here you go. Move that there. Oh, I need to move my water. Okay, don't need any of this. Wait, 
We need some music. You guys will just have to entertain yourselves here, huh? If I did this on camera, I would probably make someone vomit. <laughs> Swinging the camera around. It's got water on that. Whoops. You're making Roman blinds? Wow. I have to say, that is one thing. I, I don't really enjoy making curtains. I've made so many over the years. Okay, I'm going to... Where's my mouse? There it is. I hate when I lose the mouse on the screen. I'm gonna do the iron right now. Cause we're gonna do these next. We need a left and a right. It's really hard to tell the right and wrong side of this fabric. So if you use something like this, make sure you cut your interfacing left and right so that it'll keep you honest about this part. This way? No, this way. This one's more of a squared off and that's more of an angle. That's how I'm telling them apart, mostly. This is the fusible um, fabric, so it's not Pellon. It actually looks like fabric. It is fabric, it's a woven. My pin, what prompted my pin buying spree? <laughs> the dress form. Um, I'm getting kind of low on my other pins and I'm getting also a little bit annoyed that my pins fall out of uh, my garments sometimes when I'm marking darts and things. There's lots of ways to counter that, but I needed pins anyway because I was running low. And so it's kind of been on my mind. I kept forgetting to get them. Um, and then when I got the dress form, I realized I really want to mark um, things like where sleeveless garments looked look best on me. So I can put like maybe some colored pins, like red pins for my sleeveless armhole or my waistband height or where the deep part of a v-neck or um, oh, I don't know, things like that. And I was thinking if I got some new pins for that, that would make it a little easier. So I got three different boxes. I got the quilting, I got some silk, and I got some patchwork pins. And so they're for two different purposes. I needed them for sewing and I need them for the dress form. The quilting pins I'm gonna use for the dress form for sure. They're really long and deep and they're just like these yellow ones. They are actually a tad longer. Um, but having two different colors, I didn't even notice there are two different colors in the box. So I was pretty happy with that. And then um, the I got the silk pins and the patchwork pins because of the what they're for and their diameter look like they'd be really good for staying in a garment that I'm marking for darts and things. And um, I thought the silk pins were going to be the clear and obvious winner because they're meant for lighter weight fabrics, but actually the patchwork feel better. Who would have known? The patchwork are actually really attractive looking pins too. 
Um, I really like, I spend the extra on my pins because I like to iron my pins. I probably don't do it very much on camera, but when you do it and you, and they don't, they're not for ironing, it's bad. You, you could ruin your iron or your, and your project. <laughs> so, um, I spend the extra on the glass headed pins. Oh, cool. Nice, Sherry. Oh, it shuts off. Yours shuts off fast, huh? I feel like it heats up pretty quick, though. You get kind of the knack for, if you know you're about to use your iron, you just kind of tilt it. My old one was starting to really need to be, like, tilted, like, all the way over. <laughs> it was a little annoying. You know what I was thinking today? Wait, ye yesterday. I went on a walk with my friend and I had to sneak out of the house because the dogs would have gone nuts if I would have left without them. So I can't. I had to wear my work clothes out of the house and then I will sometimes change into my workout clothes. Um, otherwise, whoever's left at the house with the dogs, it's kind of a mess. Because Loki's still learning. Um... And I decided I would just wear like a workout top on, um, and then just my jeans because my jeans fit. And so I can go on a walk with them. It's great. All right. I think my face cam's going to be in a weird, really weird spot. But so when I got to work, I actually got to iron my, um, outfit for work. I got to iron my outfit for work at work which I thought was kind of uh, interesting. Wait, I'm over here, right? So, um, which um, I was thinking, you know, in a way, maybe having me having the same iron at home and at work is good because then I'll get a similar result. Because sometimes if you have a better work iron than home, you're not gonna get the same kind of garment. All right, so we have our pin cushion, we have our tools. These are the patchwork pins. They're clear. I have the focus off so you can't see them. They look a lot like, these are the silk um, pins. They look a lot like those. But they feel tighter in the fabric. I would think a bigger diameter would feel tighter and that's not what happens. It creates a bigger hole. All right, so we need um, these things here. Oh, I have the wrong thread color on. See, now you're wishing I, I wouldn't have sewn, aren't you? <laughs> I really want to do the um, Beatrice cover. I really want that cover on there so I can properly drape and stuff. Uh, but, and I also want something that the, my fabric slide over on a little easier, but um, I'll wait for you guys. I have some things I should just sew and I told myself today that it'd be okay if I just sewed here and watched a movie. Get some things done. Oh, I already have blue in here. Perfect. Anyone on spring break? My daughter's on spring break in a week. <laughs> You know what I do, Beverly? Um, have you seen my dorky teapot? Um, I love you, Mom. But um, my mom got me this this uh, like funny little kitschy uh, teapot that had matching cups. And there was a chicken on it. You know, like when you have a company called Chicken Boots, people send you everything with chickens on it. And um, a lot of it's great. I love chickens, so it's not a big deal. But the, the teapot was not my style, but she, you know, she found it really inexpensive. And I just keep that teapot right next to my iron because you know what, Beverly, I agree with you. Uh, and, um, when you really get into using steam, it, you really like to use it on everything. So yeah, it has a pretty good 
um, holding thing, but I've, I've definitely, <laughs> it doesn't compare to those industrial ones. But I just keep a, this old teapot and, and, and when I moved, the spout even broke and I didn't care. It's still, only the top part of the spout broke. You guys are way up there. Oh my gosh, Sherry, Sherry, that's genius. Oh, you did, Beverly? That's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I was going to do that next week, actually. That's what I was thinking I would do on Wednesday. The mending and alteration pile. Right now I have a Caroline pajama top. Um, a Tamarack vest. Two boxy bags. And the two uh, poof bag for all the scraps. Um, that's all the things I need to sew. And I don't need to sew those on camera, in my opinion. But I could. They're kind of that. So those are your choices. <laughs> You know, Sherry, I bought one of those condiment bottles and now I put my mouthwash in there because I was using a, a, a soap dispenser, like a brand new one, so there's no soap in there. Um, or maybe it was a lotion dispenser. I was using that, but it was a little awkward. And my mom and I were looking, because I needed a new one. Mine had been sitting in the bathroom so long that the bottom of it was rusting. So I saw that condiment bottle, an OXO one, the little cap is so clever. So it's like a ketchup, you know, like those ketchup bottles, but it's not red, it's clear. So I can see if it's getting low, super easy to squeeze. And the little tip isn't like a thing you can pull off and lose. It's actually hinged. I love that thing. And now I want one of those to fill my uh, iron. You guys are so smart. All right, let's sew this shut right here. Um. How'd that go? Did it just go to the edge there? I don't remember now. Yeah, so this is one of the things I was thinking on the other side that I could have lined up these junctures better. So, and, and now I know that that's what I could be doing. So let's, um, let's get that in there really nice. You got the OXO one too, yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. It's not, it wasn't like that expensive, but it makes all the difference and I, yeah. And it's funny because I, I was using it for like the first week and I texted my mom. I was like, we are genius for doing this. My mom's all, I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, oh, she, but you know what she uses it for is, um, oh, she, she said she uses it in the shower. I'm trying to think, I might be getting confused with something else now, but I know that didn't work for her, but I feel like she uses it in the shower and it might be for doing um, her uh, like neti pot type thing. <laughs> I just not wasn't, wasn't looking just now. Let's see how I did. Oh yeah, that could be that big difference right there. I'm actually not sure where I'm at on this thing. Let's see, this is this one, that's the tie. Where's the other one? What does it look like? Is this it right here? <clears throat> yeah, this is it. It looks like that. Whereas this one looks like... This, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Making sure I didn't take out that dart because it feels like I did right here. I think I did actually. Yeah, I took a little bit of this dart out. So let's fix this. I won't be able to get it close if it's not sewn. Sometimes the worst part of making adjustments is just getting everything back the way you had it. You know? Yeah, you know, Sherry, I, I should totally do that. My, my favorite conditioner has the worst bottle ever. Like the last third of it, like a big amount of it, I cannot get out of the dumb bottle. 
This doesn't look sewn, but it is. I'm just like kind of looking at it. Um, and um, that's what I should do. I should just transfer it to another bottle, turn it upside down, leave it like that way before I get my new one, go, my, my old one is done. My other pet peeve is the font on, um, <laughs> this makes me sound like such an old lady, but the font on shampoo and conditioner bottles, because sometimes I'm in the shower and my bottles look like some of those other brands that aren't like huge brands you get at Target. They, the, they use similar packaging for the shampoo and the conditioner and only the word changes and maybe one little thing. And um, I can't read sh the word shampoo and the word conditioner because they'll use like pale lime green colored font and it's small. Or it'll be in French and then the, you know, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm squirting in my hand going, that's shampoo, not conditioner. <laughs> so that's my other pet peeve. They, one of my favorite ones had rebranded. I really want that right there. That's what I want. What, how can I get that? I think the dart needs to be bigger. No, I could actually, is it pinching this right here? pinching this what would be the best to get that juncture would it be this dart here here's the dart here's what, what I'm looking at right here is this seam right here that I just closed and then this dart here it is that seam okay good that's the one that's easier to deal with I'm gonna taper it a little bit bigger get all of this out of the way. All right. Well, it didn't have any effect. Yeah, because that's this right here. But it should. Why am I confused here? Why is what I'm doing not affecting that? Okay, so here's the dart. There's the dart, right? These are the darts. This is the, is it a big deal? This goes like this, that goes like that. Honestly, it doesn't even make a difference. Okay, phew, okay. Right? Yes, they really should. I know, I know, I could just, if I had something kind of removable or just a Sharpie in the bathroom, but I shouldn't have to do that, you know? I noticed that that same company, when they rebranded it all, I was in the grocery store going, I had my glasses on and I was like, where's the word shampoo and conditioner? And what it had was like the brand and the type and frizzy hair, blah, blah, blah. And then very small underneath shampoo and conditioner. And I couldn't even find the word. And I, and I didn't even think, oh, this is gonna be a problem in the shower, but it was. Okay, so now we have this little thing closed. Let's do that. Um, shoulder, I mean armhole dart that I have lost now the end of. So let's see here, where's my other one? So much stuff here. Why is this dress so confusing? <laughs> okay, here we go. just a lot of dress to fit on my table and keep it up there.
Okay. And I'm still on the wrong side. Maybe I'll, um, I mean, I use a purple shampoo and that one's pretty easy, but I don't use it solely, you know? All right, let's try the technique Brooke turned me on to. Oof. Got my dart legs lined up. I just arranged that thinking I was doing this. So much work for a little dart. All right, we got our darts. Let's do our shoulder seams back. In there, we still have our um, we still have our what you call it, stay stitch in the neckline. This might be something I go back and kind of fussy with the alignment of the wrap there, but I also think I'm going to edge stitch part of it. I just don't want to do it until I know that uh, that won't have any negative effects. I just turned this right side out, but I actually need it wrong sides together first. Let's do that. Wrong sides together. Get this back where we were. This one's nice and loose. See, a little easier to deal with. Okay, wrong sides together first. Yeah. Making sure. Nice, Walter. Good job. Yeah, sometimes that is kind of confusing in pictures, even if they do the shading. There's just something about the way they place it, or maybe um, what I've seen also is, and I've done, I'm guilty of this too, is I'll look at it, like you'll follow the directions all the way to that point, and then all of a sudden it's confusing, and you're like, why is this confusing? And you realize they'll they'll flip the view. They don't flip shading or anything like that. They don't do it. It's not wrong. It's just like all of a sudden they'll start showing you a different perspective that they haven't been. <laughs> You're like, wait, I'm used to looking at it this way. Sometimes I sit there and go, why is this confusing? I spend more time trying to figure it out. And I'm like, why up until now have I been okay? <laughs> I think about that more for things that are non-sewing related. I'm just going to trim these a little bit. So let's see. And now I want to see about doing some French seams on my side seams. This one was sewn before. Yep. So we can sew this one. And if I do this as a French seam, wrong side and then right side, can I do that? I'm not sure I can. It won't be as nice as it could be. Like this, this is going to be inside the wrap. Hmm. Maybe I'll just see what happens. I may have to clip it. Maybe 
that'll be fine. If it's in this, this is like the dart. It's going into this dart. It actually might work. It's very interesting. Okay. And do I want to go all the way down into that? I don't think I need to. All right. Let's trim a little bit of this. This is going to be the right side. A little haircut. All right, let's iron these. Oh wait, I have one more, don't I? Let me see, I do, right? Let's see, is this one sewn before? Yes. All right, so wrong sides first. But see, this one I had already sewn a little bit. So I need to decide. See, here it goes into this dart here. Hmm. Maybe I could do flat felled instead there. I think that could work, you know? <laughs> yeah, it felt like you solved a complex equation in geometry. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's sometimes there's those steps where you just have to trust what's happening as long as it makes sense what you're supposed to do and then it just all comes together you know but there's those things where it's like you don't you don't really understand what they're telling you to do so it's not even about trust you know i think if i sewed this this way and this is in the seam there let's see how how does that work once can i do a french seam there Hmm. Sometimes you just need to surge or bind. Right? This one I'm going to leave right sides together and I'm going to address it later. Oh, here it is. How <laughs> long as I wait a minute? There we go. There's a lot going on right here in this little spot. Let's see how that looks. Not bad. Hmm. Could be a little. This little spot could be a little better. Is this the back? So it goes this way. Yeah, that does go that way. No, no, no. That's the front. Okay, that's good. That goes that way. All right, that works. That works good. Okay. Let's iron this. Yeah, are you using, using the, um, oh, I always remember, forget that person's name. Angela or something? Not Angela. I can't think of it. You know, Sydney, it is kind of nice, like, even though I don't get to keep these, it's such a nice way to figure out if I want the pattern, you know? Like the bowline, my bowline was actually a Needle Sharp subscription box. Um, and it was, I think, the only one I didn't, I forgot to pick. <laughs> oh, here, Melin, let's try and open this. I'll do it your way. 
I think opening is better. I just, it's fiddly. But I ended up liking, and this is the one I'm wearing, is in the red. And I ended up making two. I ended up making it in this wool knit that I got, reversible wool knit I got from uh, Stone Mountain and Daughter. I got a stripe that's not reversible, but the other one is. It's like these two-sided wool knits that they have. So mine was a light aqua on one and a dark teal on the other. It was very cool. This feels about the same. I was buying my cover fabric at the fabric store. I was showing them my dress form. And I can tell people were like, oh. <laughs> Maybe showing um, dress form pictures is a little startling for some folks, <laughs> not in the garment sewing world. Oh, Simplicity 7030. Oh, okay. Um, I might, Sydney. Definitely want more of this fabric in my life. I really love the, the weight of this fabric. It's pretty, it's just got really good heft to it, you know? It just feels really good. It, it makes your dress stay, like, down. It gives it, like, weight and pulls it, and I think that's kind of nice. All right, so this is a little tricky right here. All right, so we have these three, and then this one over here, I'm gonna leave for now. Um, are you guys as lost as I am in here? This one I'm gonna leave for now. Yes, right, Walter? The color on the iron cam is better. Which is ironic because, oops, sorry, I'm not over there. Um, I actually put that camera on there because it had another issue. And so, um, and I even switched my face cam and machine of uh, cameras recently because the detail's better on this cam, <laughs> on the machine cam. You don't need to see me in detail. You need to see what I'm doing in detail. I also felt like the machine cam was like really big, you know? So, yeah, right, right, exactly. Okay, we have one, I'm just going to stitch this, just put a few stitches here so I don't forget it. Um, that way I can get rid of the pin so it stops poking me. This other shoulder, we're almost back on track with our dress. Try and keep it straight. Fabric is like a, a linen and a rayon in that way, where you know it kind of wiggles and jiggles, you know. This one here. Yo oh boy. This one right here. Okay, so this one goes like this, and it goes down. 
This is it right here, right? Because this is the wrap. Let's just turn it. Oof. Okay. We have our back. It's this one here. That one's done. This one here, right here. Okay. So if I sew this like this, you gotta stop. And the dress goes underneath. Maybe I picked the wrong one. This goes up here like this. There's the wrap. Like that. My caramba. It actually wasn't hard to make these fit adjustments. Um, I actually think if your fabric has a really clear wrong and right side, it's a lot easier to keep track of where you are in this pattern. I'm making it look harder than it is for like, usually there's times where I'm like, yeah, this was, a, I got myself into a pickle. This doesn't feel that way at all. It was really easy to adjust. very clear when you're not trying to keep your work in a small space under a camera it's a lot easier all right so it feels kind of bulky right there oh that's why okay I was like it feels bulky there so I was a little worried I was catching something I still feel like I am what's going on here I feel like I didn't trim it but I we saw that I ironed it right there it is right there yeah, that could be trimmed. Yeah, that's that's what's going on there. That's my uh, actual seam. So see, then these little threads will start popping out. You gotta be careful pulling those. Pull with caution. You know. <laughs> right, Sydney. Organize them by how you use them. I'm gonna trim this here. and where you use them. I think like for me, um, keeping them mobile, like I have a cart right here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this little cart. I don't know if you can see it, honestly. Oof, see so I have this little cart right here. These are very affordable things. They are popping up everywhere. I have the Ikea Raskog at home that I just love having next to my, where I sit and play video games and watch TV, you know? Um, but that thing is really great. And you know what I'm using to hold things is the uh, broken cash register drawer where all the change goes. <laughs> these are all, these are like kids snack cups. I just use stuff I have around the house that I'm not using. Yeah, right? Yeah, I have all my buttons and a embroidery floss thing tack buttons for jeans all that stuff there I use a old um, uh, hardware parts the, the, the little drawers all that for all my hardware <laughs> like buckles and stuff like that which most people don't have a lot of that stuff um, and we used to use that at chicken boots for all of our hang tags each drawer had a different product hang tags we ha I pre-printed all our hang tags so we didn't have to write it in anymore that was just getting way too cumbersome. It was worth the expense. I don't really like how I've set myself up here. Like, what is this right here? This is the part I just sewed, huh? Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. If I could just get that in there looking better, you know? Where's the wrap? <laughs> Show me the wrap. I think this is it. Here's the wrap right here. Okay. This is what's going to show to the world. That's what I want it to look like. That's what we want right there. Okay. It's called the 2% rule. You got to be 2% smarter than whatever it is you're trying to do. Pure and simple. And I wasn't feeling 2% smarter just now. 
All right. There we go. And then I'm gonna finesse that a little bit later on. We're in the finishing stages because then we're, we're putting like hooks and eyes and buttons and buttonholes, you know? So, yeah, that's great, Walter. I know, otherwise that junk is there forever anyway, but <laughs> in a landfill somewhere. Okay. I love how I put my label on on the wrong side So let's not put it on like that. That won't help. <laughs> let's put it on the right, the correct side, which is the inside. There we go. All right, we are back to ground zero. Pretty sure. This is what we have going on here. This goes under here like this. We have our new shoulders, our new side seams, re-sewn wrap. We close the wrap hole right here. Okay. Ready? <laughs> exactly, Sydney. I only need 2%. Give it to me. Pin front underlap to back at side seams between armhole and dart dot matching notches. Continue pinning underlap to dart matching to it. Raj Miller would not be even with dart fold line. That would have been good to read. So C is, um, B is up front and C is the back. It did this already, correct? This is the in front underlap. Oh, right here. Oh gosh. I don't like turning dresses inside out. Okay. So I didn't think that underlap got stitched down. But maybe it does. <laughs> exactly, Sherry. I just, <laughs> I was only at 1%. <laughs> exactly. All right, this is the underlap. This is finished and this is hemmed. Wait. Hmm. This is the underlap. Do I really do that? Did I do something wrong? This right here is what I think they're showing me. Or maybe I already sewed this. I think, actually, I already did that. I think I already did this, okay. Because this right here will get, um, gets hooks and eyes. Left hemmed edge. Dang, I'm making this look really hard. This is the left. Oh, on the left hand, okay, yeah. So this right here, yeah, so that him it, him dead, all right, and then we have this, all right. We're okay. <laughs> well, they even say be sure not to add interfacing to the armhole facing, so, okay, good. Say so, so I'm gonna sew my left and right um, neck bands.
stack these wrong. So let's see, I'm gonna put these wrong sides together. Like this, um, like that, like that. So it goes like this, and like this. <laughs> Hope I'm not confusing you. I'm just doubting myself. Doubt is never constructive. It honestly just gets in my way. All right. Repeat with neckband facings. I'm going to do the, wait, neckband facings. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so I'm going to sew this like I usually do where I, um, I'm going to sew from the inside of the garment to the outside. You know what I mean, jelly beans? So I'm gonna start from the inside of my, the wrong side of my dress. And I'm gonna sew the neckband that way. I'm gonna sew the neckband to, to itself first. So let's put this right sides together like this and like this. Um, I'm not going to sew the short end yet. I'm just show, sewing the edge that is the um, top edge of this neck bend. So it's the interior curve. The bigger, why is that? Whoa. What happened there? Look at that. Um, I don't know what happened there. Let's line that up better. You want your you want things like this to be accurate. These things can give you trouble. There we go. My interfacing was uh, is on there a little crooked, and that's probably what I was going by. See that? Because remember we trimmed it up and. This fabric's kind of loosey-goosey, but see, there we go. There's my seam allowance. It's, it could be better. Yeah, I know, but um, if that's going to be fine. We've reworked this a lot. I want to get rid of this thread here. Here we go. Okay, now we can put our neckband together on this interior curve here. You can see like that. I'm not lining that up to the edge. I'm lining the fabric up to the edge. If that kind of thing bugs you, just trim all that off before you get sewing. Otherwise, it might lead to what happened just to me. So I'm going to line up these seams here. Let's open up the facings or the seam out. Yeah, exactly, Penny. Um, uh, what do you mean by facing fabric? This is an inner facing. The white is a fabric, a fusible fabric. I'm actually, I really like it. The thing is, I've been warned. Like some folks have said, "Oh, I had that, but it stopped sticking." Um, but I really love, like, this feels like the fabric, like it feels, you know, it doesn't feel like that, um, synthetic fuzzy pelon. Th this adheres really well. This is the stuff Hearts sends. It, it's really nice, to be honest. So I, I really like it, <clears throat> but it is fabric rather than, um, pelon. It's not good at cutting. The white, yeah, that's what that is. They didn't. They I came in to ask them what this um, item number is because they they've only told us once. 
Okay, so I might clip that curve now. I don't clip that curve. Oh, trim seam allowances corners. Like they want you to go across the ends. I'm gonna wait to do that at the end. I like having the options, but I am gonna trim and clip these corners too, or the neckline it or the the seam I just sewed. <laughs> It's not very straight, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, it's kind of nice if you do get it straight. You, I mean, it's better. It's just awkward. Like if you're at home doing this, you can do this at your table, like your rotary table. Put this nice and flat and, and trim it. I think that's a better way. Um, you know, if you have a fabric that's gonna fade or like if another seam is pressed up against it and you see the seam allowance ridge under there and it's gonna do a fade line, you might want a nice like straight parallel line to your <laughs> seam. It's gonna get blended in though. I'm just gonna clip this curve now. This is the top edge of our neckband the uppermost edge when I'm wearing it. Look at that. Let's smooth this out a little bit. My machine kinda balked at that thickness maybe? needed to get rid of that little bump there. So the reason you need to clip a curve like this is because this little edge right here, the raw edge, is going to, when it's, this is turned right side out, this little raw edge is going to end up right here, right? And if you were to measure where that's landing and measure this edge, this spot right here is longer. So this needs to be able to spread out so it can lay in there nice and flat and not get all bound up and look crummy. I know I say that a lot. I'm just trying to remind some folks because I feel like when you know the logic behind it, it's, um, you know why you're doing it and what it's for. And I don't know, it's just, I like knowing the logic. I had a boss once that um, when I first started working there, I was taking over for someone who was on maternity leave. So he was really used to her knowing how he liked things and, and stuff. And um, when he would tell me to do something, I would say, why? <laughs> I would say, why? And um, he really got irritated by this. And I finally could tell that that was happening. And I was like, I just want to know if you want it this way or that way, that's why I want to know why. And he was like, oh, okay. And so um, I learned that a lot of people don't ask why, you know, and that, and that, and I realized that's the way I learned. So some folks, maybe they just know what that person's wanting or why it needs to be that way. But if it doesn't make sense to me, I can't get behind it. And the whole time I'm doubting I'm doing it and then it's not coming out right, you know? So I ended up working for him for a long time and I hate to say it, but the gal who was on maternity leave lost her job. <laughs> so, and it, and I think it was mainly because she just couldn't come back to full time. And there, and he was like, I just really like working with her. <laughs> it was awful. Classic thing she was worried about happened. All right, I think this is. Uh... This is, where's my, where's my notches? We know they were there. We saw them earlier. Don't hide from us now. Oh, actually, I don't think they were on this piece. Okay, so I'm gonna sew this. Um, I'm gonna hang off my seam allowance off that edge and I'm gonna kind of walk this and make sure I have the right one. Yeah, 
that doesn't look like it's gonna go. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that is the wrong one. That's why we check. Yeah. <laughs> you use the quilting cotton for the facing and use the double-sided fusible you mentioned in a previous. Oh, cool. Double, you use double-sided fusible? I was telling someone to do that, but it was because they were trying to patch a hole. Logic is everything. Yeah, but sometimes like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know why the logic, like I, I also think like, I, and I'm very guilty of this. It's very obvious in my head, right? And I'm, and the way I'm saying it, I forget that you're not already there with me, right? And so I'm already like tell, telling you something that I'm um, been thinking about for days and you're just jumping into the conversation over, right? So you can't expect people to understand what's going on. And he, he was dif very difficult to work for, very eccentric French guy, and um, very smart, f a really great experience for me. But um, he was one of those people that he would pace when he was thinking, but he would wander, you know? So all of a sudden he'd be maybe in a conversation with other people and you weren't there and you were the one that needed to hear that. <laughs> And he'd be like, me, 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 come here. And I would get there and um, he would be sorting through his thoughts with the pre people in front of him who had no idea because maybe he was in the shipping and receiving department. He'd be like, you know, because blah, blah, blah. And they're like, why is the boss in here? He's making us nervous, you know? And then I'd get there and classic thing. Like as soon as he leave, I'm like, did he mention these, any of these words while he was wandering around? In here you know it was like a movie moment moment in a way um because he did not like repeating himself he did not like worrying you didn't understand what he said so if i asked too many questions whew, you know i really had to qualify why i was asking those questions it can be a lot harder in the garment industry than it was working for him so i'm thankful but um it had its moments <laughs> This is so far away. Look at that. Oh boy. Okay. I'm just pinning this along here, hanging off my edge on the wrong side. So <sighs> yeah. Right, Sherry. <laughs> well, that's okay. Walter. That's okay. I mean, if it worked, it worked. I, Holly was hard to use though. That double-sided stuff is no joke. Yeah, I just, I have a bolt of like the regular old Pellon featherweight. I have a whole bolt of it here and I use it because it's just, you know, then I don't run out. It was very affordable, um, but I prefer fabric. And I, I have to admit, I started using the Pellon because I started getting worried on my streams that people were gonna say I didn't do things properly. Like it was one of those panic moments where I was doubting myself. And then I was like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> and this is what I do. And this isn't always it. It, it. Doing this kind of thing really makes you own how you do things and why you do things. So I, it's a literally like I'm willing to change my mind. But at the same time, I will, you know, I would I'd love to talk about why I do the things I do change my mind, you know? I don't want someone saying that's not right without talking to me about it. This thing better work, come on. Uh, you know, there we go, that looks better. So I'm kind of just letting this relax. Like this, this is, this is that wavy edge, remember? I can't really see, I could use a few more notches I thought I did them all, but I, I may have missed a couple. Look at that mount right there. Let's see. We know that this one's non-negotiable. That's our center back neck. So now we just need to get all this in here. <clears throat> we got this though. I think I should be sewing it from this side. 
I think it would be easier to ease in there. I have that stay stitch edge. I could actually pull on it a little bit and draw it up if I wanted. Let's see, like it wants to go in there. It's gonna be fine. So. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like sometimes uh, me saying something, especially when I'm recording a video, there's not that interaction happening. So I have to be really careful with how I set up what I'm saying. And it shows in my videos because I'll say, actually what I mean is this. Um, writing spec sheets for years really helps you become a specific communicator, you know? And I'm, um, I don't, I'm, a, I'm all about communication, but I feel like I have a long way to go on communicating things accurately the first time the way I want it to come out because I don't, I am definitely one of those people. I think sometimes when I'm with people uh, for the first few times, they think I might be kind of dumb because I just sit there and I listen. I'm like, but why, why would you do that? Or why would you do this? Or how, how is that? And it's because what I'm trying to figure out is what you just said to me, I can interpret three different ways and I'm trying to figure out which way they're going because I don't want to challenge someone I don't know very well. I'm not trying to challenge them. I just want to know what they're thinking and what they're doing. And so um, I think the first few times people are always like, what, this person doesn't know, <laughs> you know? Then it's more that I'm like, no, there's just a few different ways. And so when you're writing spec sheets and you're not at the factory that that thing's going to be sewn, you have to make it so that it can't be interpreted um, a few different ways. It's like saying, uh, top or bottom versus under or um, under or what's the opposite <laughs> under over or under you know like that kind of thing you get really uh, specific about that a top pocket and an under pocket rather than or you know top collars and under collars <clears throat> but then there's other pieces that you can do that like say you have things on your garment that like stripes that you sew in stripes your top stripe, your middle stripe, your lower stripe, right? But you might have an under stripe, like an under facing for a stripe that goes under one of those, you know? So, yeah, Angela, exactly. All right, I'm gonna sew this from this side since that's how I pinned it and I just kind of doomed myself that way. So like I said, this is the wrong side of the garment and I'm sewing the facing to it first. need my pin cushion. I think when we become good communicators too, we get less, um, our skin gets thicker on the, the internet. <laughs> You know, like you don't automatically assume someone's going the negative way of how they're saying it, <laughs> you know? You're like, why would you assume the negative, <laughs> you know? But we do. You start going, oh, that could be meant a few different ways. I'm sure they didn't mean it this way. They probably meant it the, the nice way, you know? Might be able to I might be about to cut the top of my head off you can always lower the label I hate it when I don't get my label in straight I'm like I'm just gonna put a few stitches and tack it in place and that'll help and then uh, because it's only a few stitches it does this so ah hi Emma welcome welcome You are not alone here from the UK. There's a few of you. There's usually quite a few. I know it gets to your bedtimes though. <laughs> I'm in California. Yeah, this color is really pretty. It's the 
the viscous linen noil from Hearts Fabric and um, in a dark teal. I just saw this whole conversation between people on Instagram. Don't you love how you can creep on people's conversations uh, about removing the pins? I usually sew right over them. I, I don't worry about it at all. But someone was like tisk tisking someone. Night, Malin. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week, maybe. Oh, I just got that a little crooked. Oh my god, I need to finish fix that. Remember, this is your neck seam coming all the way across here. You want a nice smooth line. And uh, I am famously, I will jig jog sometimes, you know. And it's mainly because I keep stopping to take my pins out. I should just leave them in, sew it all, then pull them out. Now this isn't an opening that meets like this. It crosses. So you got a little forgiveness for um, getting this lined up perfectly. You want to get it the same. See, where was that spot I thought I did? I don't see it. Just a little bit of my head. All right, let's press this. It's nice to finally uh, finish an edge. D do, do, does they do they Emma? That's funny. I know, but you know, for so long that was the norm. You know. Trends change. It can, you know, I change my needle often enough. So, all right. So this is the, like I said, the wrong side of the garment, but I'm going to start pressing this. Oof, boy. Heavy dress. I think I could use actually more water in here. Here's my funky teapot. <laughs> One of my Rowentas a long time ago came with this little uh, pitcher, little plastic pitcher, and I saved it. Uh, but it's on my it's on my machine at or my iron at home and. Um, it is handy, but it I spill a lot with it. So I really like using that little pitcher. Let's iron this too. So just in case you're wondering, uh, I don't know if you can see the discoloration that happens when I'm ironing it. That doesn't stay. I've checked, it's fine. I need a guinea pig tailor's ham right now. You know? I like to say, Emma, like a lot of times that your sewing teacher's not gonna see it, so don't worry about it. You know, certain things you're sewing. <laughs> getting a few wrinkles in there while I'm trying to do this. This is when a, a proper ironing board would be a little bit helpful. I do have my sleeve salami. Just pressing that all that seam allowance uh, towards the neck band just like that. I'll come back and do the rest of this edge here. I need to clip this edge, I think. I may not need to since it's the other curve, uh, not the one that it'll get stretched. But I don't like it to be wavy in there. That seam allowance be wavy and be kind of big. You kind of see it, you know? So I may need to trim it down. I'm 
Yeah, see that little bit of waviness there? Let's get rid of that. How do we think, well, how do we think that looks? All right, and then we're gonna fold it over towards the outside of the garment. So let's fold this this way. So this is the outer side. So we're gonna cant that little seam Definitely towards the inside of the garment or do it right on the edge, right? Because this is our side facing to the world. Um, don't think there's under stitching, uh, but I'm going to check before I sew. You can if you want, but... Um, I'm just trying to maintain like how the instructions have you do it since it's for hearts and if you're doing the tutorial. I'm not sure also the traditional Tibetan chupa technique, sewing techniques. It's probably sewn by hand and much nicer. <laughs> I always like finishing on the right side of the garment. It's not understitched. So you don't want to get any torquing on something like this, this neckband, right? We've got this nice interfacing. It's looking really nice and flat. Bye, Walter. Have a really great, uh, is that choir practice? Have a great weekend too. Yeah, Emma, I really like the uh, folklore patterns. I haven't made any in a while. I think I have something right here I need to address. Right here. I think I just have a little bit of seam allowance rolling, so we'll check that out. Um, yeah, they're really interesting. I, I was telling everyone that when I was, like, I learned to sew a really long time ago, but then I worked at this fabric store that kind of pushed me deeper into really loving it and appreciating it. I had already gone to design school. I had already worked in the garment industry and I was kind of taking a break because I just didn't really like the garment industry. It's kind of an intense industry. And um, I, I don't know, I just hanging out at this fabric store where people really took it seriously. They really loved it. It was pretty low key in other ways. So I'm just pinning this at a few key points to prevent the torquing. That's what I'm doing right here. Shoulders, center back shoulders, and then the ends. Um, and uh, she was a really big fan of folkware patterns. I'd never seen them, of course, because I'd only worked at a big box fabric store in high school. And I kind of fell down that rabbit hole. I, I really got into different sewing techniques. Um, I'm not an expert in any of them, you know. Okay, I still need to sew this. So maybe I'll sew this and then I'll keep pinning it. But if you're interested in like exploring different older sewing techniques around the world, they're super fun for that. Oh, chores are waiting, not choir. <laughs> um, yeah, that can just be a really nice alternative to the things you sew regularly. They're usually unique garments too, but when you make them in like a modern modern fabric, it really changes the look of them, which is kind of fun. All right, so now I'm gonna sew my end point here. So I can get it spot on there. I'm gonna trim this corner off. I'm gonna trim this bulk down. And now I'm gonna see how it's gonna do before I trim anything else.
Yeah, so I'm going to trim down. I don't really need to trim that down more. my all in there and shove all that stuff in there. It's pretty thick right there between the interfacing, uh, the seams, the neck band, the hem. What am I forgiving? There's a lot going on right there. All right, we'll leave that like that. That'll be our corner there. That looks nice. Uh, where's the other one? Here we go. I sew it the in my under my machine in the, the other way so that I can sew it from this fold side. In other words, I, normally you would sew with your garment to the left of the head, but then I wouldn't be able to see this little juncture right here, so I cheat and do it this side. You really want this edge to be, the seam to be parallel to your cut edge right here, right? Like, just because you see wherever this is at, don't, like, cant it. It probably, you should just trust what the pattern piece is doing. This one's not doing anything weird, but some of them can be. I feel like I just got that a little distorted. Look how small my seam allowance got right there. All right, so let's trim this corner off. And I'm gonna trim a little bit of this off. Is, oh, am I orange today? That happened the other day too, let's see. I know, I'm not orange, that's for sure. Yeah, the other day the um, saturation was so high. I could do that. Is that better? Yeah, the other day I accidentally think I clicked the saturation um, box on the iron. <laughs> And we were like, what happened? Everything was orange, even the ironing mat. I look like a spray tan. <laughs> so the lighting over here is uh, all fluorescence. So okay, so I'm just kind of folding this. Let's get rid of some of these threads right here. So I always try and play with how I want this to fold sometimes. So here's my edge right here, right? This is my edge. Um, and then I need this edge to turn under, right? So just turning it under, sometimes it's really bulky right there. So I'll open this up like this. You can see it right there, right? Sometimes I'll open the seam allowance here and I'll fold it along that edge like that and then fold it down. There's a few different ways to do it. So I would just, I just try each. So when you do it this way, it means that all those little edges right there, I don't know if you can see them, they're like stacked. Like it's like a sandwich right now, right? So if you do it this way, where you fold the seam allowance of the vertical seam towards the neckband like this, and then fold it back, you're wrapping around that sandwich part and then folding it under, but it's bulkier. It's far harder sometimes with certain fabrics and like spots to get that nice and flat. So this way is gonna probably be a little bit easier. And you can trim down those bulk, that bulk, but if you saw on the other side, I trimmed this one a little too close. So then I had this nubby little seam allowance and it wants to just kind of stick straight up. It's like if you cut your hair really short, it sticks up, right? It doesn't lay left or right. Yeah, exactly, Sherry. I know, I'll, I have box lights, but there's no room over here to put them. But if it becomes a problem, I'll figure it out. I'll hang them up or something. The box lights are nice. They're just big. So that's a little better. It's less bulky. 
a little easier to deal with. And I can use this all and kind of pull it a little bit and hold it down. And um, it's got a little bit more flexibility. I, I am, this is a really good technique to employ when you're working on a collar at that, at that front and center point right there. Try and try each one to see what works for you, your project and the fabric you're using. All right, so now let's pin this in a few. Oh, the dress is so heavy. These spots here. Let's just kind of mash this down here. Sometimes what I like to do to prevent the torquing is I just pin it, you know, kind of leaving about an inch away from the raw edge there like this. This nice and flat. And just pin it about an inch from the raw edge, just like this. Now you're like, all right, um, now I have told you torquing will not be tolerated. Same here. The dress really wants to pull on the whole thing. Oh boy. The only reason I wouldn't sew this dress again is because that kind of, I just don't like it when that happens. <laughs> I'm a wimp. Yeah, that's true, Brooke, but um, the only thing I don't like about those ring lights is the way they make your eyes look. With the ring, they have the little ring on, I see that and I'm like, I, yeah. All right, so let's actually pin this here. I like pinning this as if I'm on that side facing it, but the dress is too heavy, so I'm gonna do it like this for now. But I actually have to turn it around. All right, so let's just pick it up now near where we have some of these little landmarks. Just fold it under. And just that fold should just barely go past your stitching line there. Now remember, this is the stitching side that's going to show to the world. Now, but because you are stitching it on the outside, it doesn't really matter where it, the thread lands on the inside as much now because no one will um, see it. I know your ego might want that to be lined up, but um, you don't have to put that pressure on yourself if you don't want to, so. Mm, Sherry, you sound like you know what you're doing with that kind of thing. Yeah, the lighting over here, that's why I, that's the other reason I flipped the two cameras. Cause my face under this, this light looks more like a, this camera, the light on here, looks more like a, a, it's vibrating. Yeah, I don't know, you'd be surprised though. You have to remember how many video streamers I watch. <laughs> Andrea O. Uh, Mormino. Her skin is so nice. You are, a, oh, you are a photographer, Sherry, okay. I could try it. I'd ha where would I put that? I could just do no face cam. That sounds good. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just kind of working this fold edge here. You can get rid of some of these pins now that you have it secured. Um, I'm not right on top of it, so I can't see how, if my edge is, is not wiggly, but I'll, I'll be able to fix that as I go once I'm looking at it, the neckband coming towards me while I'm sewing, you know? Really, Brooke? Okay. 
I ended up boxing up all my box lights when I moved the setup because they're so big. I really like them though. And when I look back on my old videos in my old space before I moved here, they look better with the box lights. <laughs> they come on a tripod. Yeah, the, my problem, it's hard to explain you guys because of the way the setup is because my computer and camera are in the middle on like an island. And then I have it on a Lazy Susan so it rotates because I have four camera stations. So anytime I have to walk around something, it's kind of tight. And um, and I, I have all the cords now hanging from the ceiling so that they're not getting hung up on each other when I swivel. So adding anything is a big consideration because <laughs> I'm a noob. <laughs> Right. What I want to find out too is, um, okay, this is a little area right here. I need to fix something here. I can tell. See that? Let's relax that. I love the white interfacing so you can see your stitches. It's nice. The other thing I need to figure out is a, now can I record video using Skype? If I wanted to interview someone? You know what I mean? I got a little tucked there, but that I think I can smooth out. There's that weird lapped that bit of fabric. Yeah, the box lights are really nice. I would always see Rayanne post selfies. And uh, I could tell she was at work doing it with the box lights. She loved them. It's kind of funny. She was, she was like, I want to set those up. <laughs> she set those up for me. Soft boxes. <laughs> Yeah, when I bought bought everything, I just was like, all right, this seems like it has what I want the effect to be. Can I get that nice and smooth? I hope so. It's a lot of pins right there. None right here. Ouch. Yeah, I did find out that I can't use my GoPro camera. So that's kind of a bummer. I, need, I wish I had a weight right here. I would hold my dress up on here with a weight. That's what I would do normally. Yeah. Because um, I was also hoping a better quality camera would solve some of those. Some issues. It might create others though. So. But apparently GoPros, um, if you want to do live, you have to go through their app. So it won't work. Oh well. Are you saying yes to the Skype thing, Brooke? Yeah, I think I could do that because then I can just do show my my monitor. All right. Stop pulling. It's like, you know, when you're um, a mom and your kid, you're trying to like, you've, you're a good mom and you've given a ton of attention to that kiddo, right? Like you're not neglecting them, but then someone needs to talk to you. You're trying to talk to them. You want to really pay attention to what they're saying because it's kind of something you've been wanting to know about. And then your kid's pulling on your pants. Mom, 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 mom. Or it's more like mama, mama. Mama, <laughs> that's how this feels. Like this dress is being pulled by a toddler the whole time. Like, <laughs> okay, cool, Brooke. That's good to know. 
Okay, so my only thing is I don't like back tax right there, but that's okay. All right, so let me look at this area right here before I do back tack it. Get that tucked in there nice. Get a nice corner going right here. Let's see if I can get that. That got ironed down a little bit. You might need to um, raise the pressure, uh, lessen the pressure of your pressure fit or increase it to do this kind of thing. Helps a lot. Now to prevent the torquing, you know, we did that little line of pins there. But the other thing um, that I do is I try and pull this apart as I'm going. I'm kind of spreading this apart with my fingers like this. Because the machine's still going to fight me. It's still gonna be like, yeah, I don't know. I kind of want this side to slip towards you, you know? So I try and use my awl and I just hold it down. I'm not really pushing it, but I am making it so that it stays right there. Because the presser foot is, is coming towards me, right? So it's in essence, it's pushing this fabric like this. And the feed dogs are pulling. So you've got these two opposing forces that just can create a little bit of torque. Now, if you have a walking foot, you're not worried about this. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, Brooke. I think the, um, I think why I'm not sure is because most inter video interviews I see are uploads, right? So they can edit out connecting. And when I, like when I got video interviewed by uh, Yoth Yarns, remember that? Veronica Job, she used Skype, but she edited the video and then uploaded it. So, um, you're not seeing the act of when I go onto my computer. And, uh, Cause that is when you see the, um, that like mirror effect, you know, like when you put a, a mirror medicine door to the mirror and then you see that that's what happens when I show you guys my computer screen. I think it's just part of it. So see, since this is on the right side of the garment, I'm not really worried about, I want the inside to look nice, don't get me wrong. But if it falls off the band on the inside, no one's gonna see that, it's against your neck. Like I say, your sewing teacher isn't gonna grade you. They're not here right now. I feel like I'm about to run out of thread, bobbin thread, it's, it's making a funny noise. I will say this kind of fabric, the, the, some of the drawbacks with this kind of fabric are, this fabric is, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's not squishy, but when it's this thick and there's all these layers and you go to top stitch it, it is like your needle is sinking into it. And so when it's crooked, it really shows. I, like I already see a piece, see look at that right there. Cause I got that thickness, it pushed me off. For the most part, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, walking foots exactly. There you go. I don't have that option. I, I have a, a, needle, a single needle, not a needle feed or a walking foot. And my home machine doesn't have that function either. So yeah, I would employ it for something like this. Look at this is all still laying flat. I'm not getting any torque lines, thankfully. All right, let's look at our little juncture there. Put that in there. 
can see some of my seam allowance from the vertical edge trying to pop out. This pin actually isn't helping me. it over I you know I do have that little like dip that is the back of my neck let's look at the inside it's not bad look at that it's like perfectly stitched in the ditch there <laughs> there's a problem <laughs> it's actually like pretty much stitched in the ditch on the back side which is kind of funny I guess I will fix this spot since um, that doesn't look so good. <laughs> Poor Sarami. All right, I'm gonna fix this and I'll probably sign off. And then we'll finish this on Wednesday. So we at least got back on track and we made a little headway. Maybe I'll look at my uh, mini quilt sew along again and fret over that for a little bit. I cut my forehead off. I was a little worried about that on the first pass. I'm kind of surprised it didn't happen then. <laughs> I could hand stitch it, but no way. Now I'm up for the challenge. So let's look and see where this is at. right on that so let's see if I can get this pull this down a little bit that seam line right there and keep this higher up where's my I want to make sure all these little threads though are able to be corralled the thread match is so good I can it's great it help, that gives us a leg up all right, so here's my seam line. I'm gonna put this right on there. That looks like it went straighter that time too. Sometimes those little spots that go crooked, they're really hard to get straight because there's something on the inside pushing your machine a little bit. There we go, that works. All right, that looks nice. I think I can get this a little better. I can't tell if that's a, just a thread right there. Maybe it is, okay. This one goes um, underneath. So I'm really just worried about this one right here, which actually looks pretty good. Looks better than the other one. Oh, I don't like that though. That I will fix. That, remember I said the iron um, pushed it a little bit? I should have fixed that. It just gave me trouble. So I'm gonna fix that. Which I don't like fixing because it's near my start stop, you know? That's when things can kind of get dicey. That's what I think. Anytime you have to start taking stuff out near your start stop. it starts getting too thick there because then I think, okay, I just won't, I just won't start, I won't take out that so I don't tear the fabric or anything. This is what I tell myself. And then I'm like, oh, but now when I fixed it, now I have two start stops, one next to the other. And if I have to change it, which I usually do, I have to take out both. All right, so we just need this. The sewing looked fine. 
The seam did not right here. Let's push this up. I really need to work on that too. That'll happen in the finishing. nice it's all sewn I can really pull it keep it nice and stretched there we go that looks good get rid of all these little threads and no one will know perfect give that a good press it'll look really good all right and then we'll finesse this later on when we know where all of our hooks and eyes are gonna be let's kind of look at it Then you have the ties. Wait a minute. Where'd the ties go? <laughs> the ties are like out and under, around the skirt and then through. <laughs> I was like, that looks like I just sewed the wraps on the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so this one goes under, this one goes over. Like that. That looks nice. Kind of wish my um, armhole facings were done so I could put it on the form. Very nice. I have it kind of shoved close together. All right. I like looking at the stream health. <laughs> That's good. See, the lighting to me looks pretty bad on these light, these dark fabrics. Yeah, this is a nice dress. I like it. Got the darts, which helps the curvier gals like me. What's going on there? Oh, it's just iron drawn. Okay. Phew. Then we have the wrap that it actually goes to the back, but here's the wrap. Oh, over right here. that I think I'll edge stitch this and like I was saying earlier I think um, tacking this dart the side seam dart to itself inside there would keep this sunk in there and the wrap because otherwise this does this kind of flops towards you this little thing right here like that so all right thanks Brooke <laughs> thanks Emma yeah it looks good I like it we really fiddled with this one because um, we went back in and kind of did some surgery. But I think that was good. Yeah, you can do it to the front or the back. You can do it to the front or the back, but this right here, this part goes always like that. You know, like it has this um, little loop that we're going to make. But yeah, you could do it to the front or the back. I feel like I've seen this dress now, and I actually made a wrap dress like this um, in the 90s, <laughs> and I saw the fabric I used for that at this fabric sale it was at last summer, or last Sunday. I was like, I used that fabric for a wrap dress I made in the 90s, and they were like, don't say how old my fabric is. <laughs> she stored it really nice. All right, well, um, I'm gonna sign off because I can't go on much longer without eating lunch. And we've been live for three hours. So I will see you guys on Wednesday to finish this. And then we'll do a sew along for the project bag next week, Thursday and Saturday, cutting and sewing. I better tell people we're doing that so they can join us. I haven't cut that on camera, so I think that'll help a few people too. And I don't need any more project bags, but I guess I'm gonna get another one. <laughs> I have like two more cut out too. All right, I will see you guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks for coming. If you want to support me, consider a Patreon. Um, it's only five bucks a month. Keeps me going here. And you get 
cool stuff from me occasionally. You get patterns, you get discounts on patterns, and um, you know, it's it's a good community. So thanks, Terry. Awesome. Yeah, I think the fit stuff was really fun. Thanks, Emma. Happy sewing. Thanks for staying up late with us. Um, have a great weekend. I will see you guys Wednesday, probably 2 p.m. Pacific. Thanks, Angela. I'm glad. Okay, cool, Brooke. <laughs> it's heavy duty sewing. Yikes. Um, uh, uh, what was I about to say? Yeah, so 2 p.m. Pacific, which will be quite a bit later for you European folks and Brits. So, um, I'm just trying those out. So let me know if you like those later streams. Otherwise, we'll just keep it at the 11 a.m. I kind of like it, actually. I like having all of Wednesday up leading up to it because I only get Tuesday and then um, I stream the next day. I'm off on Monday, so it gives me a little more time. So, all right, guys. Um, I'll see you Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Bye.